Today we continue our discussion about uh, the analysis of the internal forces and moments that appear in members as part of uh, looking at beams um, in chapter 7. So the idea I want to convey today is how does one go about designing a beam for a given application? The answer lies in being able to accurately find the shear and bending moment at any point along the beam and that can be done by the kind of numerical calculations we've been doing and also show you today uh, a new technique uh, which involves being able to create shear and bending moment diagrams and we'll end our discussion today with uh, with an example problem so just to remind you uh, you know we were looking at beams um, uh, which is one of the most important engineering structures that are used in uh, in a variety of load bearing applications um, we looked at uh, analyzing a beam uh, both a two force member as well as a multi force member and we identified that uh, it's possible to assign internal states of, uh, of forces that relate to uh, uh, the beam at any position along the beam right and uh, the idea was that uh, when you analyze the equilibrium of the beam and look at the internal forces you find that you have to assign an axial force, a shear force and a bending moment and that is when you completely describe the internal state now the reason the internal state is important is because when you apply a load you want to make sure that the beam you selected can actually withstand that load and doesn't break during uh, during its application now in terms of uh, the kind of support and the loads that you put on beams you can generally classify them into two categories uh, one is um, basically shown out here which is uh, you know you, you take a beam um, and you load it at specific points uh, like that shown here at P and C right? so this is called concentrated loading uh, likewise you can have a case where uh, you have distributed loading it means you have a load per unit length appearing in one part of the beam it changes to another value over the other part of the beam and so on and of course you can have a combination of the both of the two you have a concentrated load as well as a distributed load appearing on the same beam now um, uh, one of the ways beams are classified uh, besides the way they are loaded is the way they have been supported right and so you can see here uh, one of the simplest supports is uh, is a beam which has supports on both ends and this is called a simply supported beam uh, it's allowed to kind of move at one side uh, along the x-axis and it's fixed uh, on the other side right uh, you can have an overhanging beam or you can have a cantilever beam now it turns out that these steps of supports lead to statically determinate beams that means the number of equations uh, are equal to the number of unknowns uh, in the case of statically indeterminate beams the number of um, unknowns uh, can be uh, more than the number of equilibrium equations so we have to evaluate to see if the beam is under stable or unstable equilibrium and uh, we won't spend too much time discussing this in 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 this lecture and in this uh, in this class so let's go ahead and figure out you know what is required for us to be able to design a beam it turns out it's a two-step process the first step is really to determine the shear forces and the bending moments uh, that are produced by uh, by all the loading that is going to be applied to this beam so as an engineer you're going to first evaluate what kind of loads the beam is going to take and then starting with that you then go ahead and design uh, your beam based on being able to analyze the shear and bending moments right? and then once you have that uh, down then you can select an area for the beam that you know will be able to withstand uh, the shearing forces and bending moments that will occur over uh, ten, tens of years, 20 years, 50 years and, uh, and on depending on uh, what time frame you want to design the beam uh, for in the particular application. For example if it's a bridge you want to design it for you know for 50 years or so right. Okay so uh, this now, now let's go on to you know applying this part here how do we actually go about determining the shear forces and the bending moments right so the first step uh, is something that hopefully by now you are familiar with which is you work with the free body diagram of the entire beam to find the reaction forces 
So shown in this figure here is an example of what we will be doing. So initially, uh, we have a loading that is set up like this with the support system that is set up like that. So our first step here is to find uh, all the reaction forces. So I free up the beam and that's what I have here, a free body diagram of the entire beam. And, and, and then from that, I calculate the value of the reaction forces at point A and point B, which is where the supports were, right? Um, and, and then um, the next step is to look at specific parts of the beam. Uh, just around the positions where you have applied either a concentrated load or an extended load. So you um, you then go ahead and um, um, cut the beam at a convenient position. For example, uh, here we've shown a cut at C, which is just on the right side of the of the concentrated load and the distributed load. Uh, and now uh, what you do is you have to follow a certain sign convention in assigning uh, the shear force and the bending moment uh, to to this to the beam. So the convention. Uh, is as follows. So first let me just uh, focus in on here. So if you look at now uh, the free body diagram of the cut portion, we of course have a reaction force, we have our distributed load, we have our concentrated load, and now we have added two terms here. One is V which is our shear force, right, and M which is a bending moment, right. And so, uh, and then on the opposite side, uh, the other part of the beam, you can see that uh, the signs that are assigned to the shear and the bending moment are opposite to what we had on on our left left part. Okay, so now um, there is an important uh, convention to follow in terms of the sign that you assign to V and M, and let's look at that for a moment. So what we need to do is that when we solve these problems, you want to start out by assigning the signs to your shear and the moment in this form here. So what this is saying is that on the left part of my cut. I assign a shear that's uh, pointing downwards and a moment that is trying to rotate the beam uh, counterclockwise. The reason we want to do that is that these are, remember, these are internal forces, right? And they are compensating for the external forces. So what this is compensating for is the fact that the external forces are trying to shear the beam in this form here, right? And, and so the internal forces preventing this this step of shearing from taking place so that means my left side is being pushed up and my left, right side is being pushed down and that's the convention we want to follow similarly the bending moment that you apply here to the internal uh, cut on the left side is, is to offset the external bending moment that is trying to curve the beam upwards so this is concave upwards and so this is the sign convention we're going to follow so the shear at um, uh, and uh, shear V and the bending moment M um, are going to be positive when the internal forces and couples acting on each portion are shown like in the figure here. So if this is what you end up finding for your internal state, then uh, you're going to uh, know that the beam is actually being applied by external forces that result in a shear like this and a bending moment like that. Okay. So this is something that's important. Okay. So once we've found the shear and bending moment at the internal points, the final step is to uh, develop what are known as shear and bending moment diagrams. So remember, uh, in this figure here, we started out here. Uh, we did the FBD of the entire figure here. And then at various points, we're doing uh, the internal FBDs, the internal states. We're calculating the internal states by cutting the beam up at different positions. Right? And so now what I'm talking about is this part here uh, which you can see is a plot of uh, on, uh, of the uh, axis X and along the Y axis I either have V or I have M okay and and so you start at one end of the beam and then you plot all the way to the other end the value of M or V and so these are known as bending moment diagrams and the reason they are important is that they help in uh, in designing structures by uh, by having uh, you see in a gra graphical form the value of the shear force and the bending moment uh, along the structure of the beam. So these are very valuable diagrams to be able to uh, draw and be able to see. Okay, and uh, what happens is that once you have these diagrams in front of you, they can be used to determine you know the type, the size, and the material of the beam that you want to put in there for a given structure, so that you know that it's not going to fail. So this is something that is very, very important. 
okay so with that what I'm going to do today is introduce you to uh, to doing the complete picture that means you start out with with a beam and you're able to find the shear and bending moment diagrams at different positions and then go on to drawing the diagram of the shear and the bending moment uh, along the length of the beam so we're going to start uh, our problem with analyzing this beam here um, which has been um, given to you uh, so we have loadings shown here uh, and we have um, uh, uh, reaction forces out here and we want to find out you know what the state of the system is uh, at um, uh, for the entire uh, uh, structure right so remember a strategy here first step is we have the free body diagram of the entire beam so that we can calculate the reaction forces um, uh, it turns out that uh, what I have here is actually the result of this activity here. I believe the figure is um, uh, you, uh, I will put it up in my in the in the slides the PDF slides so you can double check the actual figure but uh, it looks something like this so uh, it will be like that and there is a support here and a roller support here and then you have 20 kilo newtons applied here. Uh, and you have uh, 40 kilo newtons applied here and uh, the various distances are provided to you right and that's uh, that's what done here so the result is that we have we are going to calculate the first step the free body diagram so uh, let's begin by calculating you know um, the reaction force at D by calculating the moment about um, about point B where you have uh, a fixed support so I, I see that I have a reaction uh, a moment from the 20 kilo force that's being applied at A and that's at a distance of 2.5 meters and it's tending to bend the, the beam uh, in a clockwise direction so I'm going to assign it a positive sign. Uh, if I look at the 40 kilo newton force it's at a distance of 3 meters and it's tending to rotate the beam in an anti-clockwise sign so I'm going to assign it a negative value so it's negative 40 and finally FD which I start out by assigning a positive y direction and so this is at a distance of 5 meters and it's going to rotate the beam uh, clockwise so it's uh, the same sign as uh, the 20 kilonewton first and so that's plus so when I put all this together I find that my FD is 14 kilonewtons and that's what's shown out here now I can do equilibrium in x and y uh, very quickly you'll see that there is no x force so FBX which was the reaction force here uh, is 0 and uh, and we can then go ahead and calculate FBY uh, and you put everything together here uh, you'll see that uh, the total is uh, 46 kilo newton. so let's look at this again so you have 20 kilo newton coming from this applied force here FBY is our unknown and then we have this should be 40 kilo newton here which comes from the applied force here uh, with a negative sign negative y direction and then we have a positive uh, 14 kilo newton here which corresponds to FD and so when you add all that up together you get uh, FBY is 46 kilo newtons okay? so just note the typo here this should be 40 not 4 minus okay? okay so we finished our complete analysis of the free body diagram of the entire beam and now we want to go ahead and start looking at the uh, at the shear and the bending moment at various positions along the beam so the positions we will look at uh, tend to be you know on either side of either the reaction uh, points or uh, the applied external loads so we have a reaction point here these two and we have applied loads here right so we want to look uh, between these two points between these two so in this region here and then in this region here right and that's what uh, is the typical uh, scenario we're going to look uh, in between these two close to the reaction points or the applied loads so that we can develop a good sense of how the the V and the M vary as you go along the various position so I'm going to do an example with uh, by finding out the V and the M at this cut here at position 1 that is marked right so what are we doing here we cut it and then like you've done previously we assign by the sign convention we assign the V pointing down and the M pointing in the counterclockwise direction and now we want to calculate what the V and the M are here. So uh, again, here 
all we are doing now is going to apply equilibrium conditions of uh, the equilibrium in moment and force because we know that this structure should not be moving or should not be rotating okay so so let's go ahead and do that and and then we see what we get so the first thing is uh, I'm going to say okay the total force in the y direction should be zero at this point that means the 20 kilonewton force acting downward is negative 20 kilonewton um, uh, minus the v1 which is also negative according to our sign convention here that we started out with shows us that the v1 turns out to be negative 20 kilo right and that means our, our uh, original sign assignment is incorrect and that means our real v1 is actually going to be pointing upwards okay and that's fine now we do the same thing with ma and here we want to pay some attention because this changes a little bit from what we've been doing so far so I'm now going to calculate the moment about point A, which is this point here, right? So at point A, I'm applying it 20 kilo in force, but that is right at the position of point A. So it's zero meters, so that actually contributes a zero. Plus we have our uh, internal bending moment M1, which is positive according to a sign convention. And so that tells us that basically our M1 is zero at point A, right? At A. But now let's say uh, I, I take the same piece here. I'm just going to blow it up a little bit just to make it uh, easier for us to see what's going on. So this is M1 and uh, and this is A, right? And I calculated the moment right here, MA. So what if I now calculate the moment at this point here? Let's call it M1, right? So again, uh, I'm going to write the equation down here. So at M1, I know that I have 20 kilo Newton acting downwards times the distance now of M1, which let's call it L, uh, okay, as the length, plus M1, okay, and this equals zero. Uh, so you see now that our M1 at, at that position mark one is going to be negative 20 uh, times L. So our M1 is actually varying linearly with the position as I start from point A and I work inwards into the beam. And this is something that's going to become very important for us as we draw the bending moment diagram. So please take a note of this. Okay, so now what I do is I continue working myself through the beam at various positions, calculating the V and M just like we did for uh, position one, right? So this is going to be an exercise for you to do. So you can do it at two, three, four, five, and six. And so you come all the way down here and you evaluated all the, the V's and the M's, okay? And um, and just make sure that you, you start out by assigning the sign convention. So V down and M up for the piece on the left side and continue doing it that way. And you look here for a piece on the right side, I've uh, assigned the opposite sign, so V up and M to uh, the clockwise direction. So make sure you start out by assigning that sign convention and then when you calculate it, if your answer turns out to be negative uh, for one of the signs, that means the, the actual shear bending moment is pointing in the other direction, right? So this is something that you want to keep track of. Okay, so now uh, we have all the internal uh, bending moments and the shear forces along the beam and now we want to finally put together everything to find the diagram. So, um, so the diagram begins by basically taking uh, the beam and below it you draw the x-axis that goes along the length of the beam and on the y-axis you either plot M or V as shown here. Okay. And, uh, and so uh, now we want to plot as a function of position along here what, what you found from your calculations. And uh, what we found from our calculation for uh, point one was that basically uh, you will see that the shear uh, is constant till you reach point B and it's a negative 20 kilonewton value. And that's what is shown here. So remember this is our origin. And so I'm, I'm now um, uh, plotting 20, negative 20 kilonewtons, which is this point here, and it's constant. Then once I reach B and I calculate on the other side of B, I'll find that it's actually a positive value of 26 kilonewtons, and that's what this box here now shows. Uh, and then finally, uh, when I reach C and I go past it all the way to D, I find that it drops back down to a negative value. So this is our shear diagram for the beam along its length. Now remember, uh, we did the bending moment and we wrote that M1 was turning out to be 20 kilonewtons 
times the length L. That means uh, at L equals zero, uh, we had zero, uh, it was actually a negative value. At L equals zero, it was actually zero. And then as I went along the length all the way to point B, uh, you can see here that it goes uh, linearly with L. And so I have a, a straight line that defines my M versus uh, position along the beam. And so uh, likewise, when you will finish all these calculations, you'll see that you have this kind of behavior going on along the uh, rest of the beam. And so that means um, our, our bending moment actually varies linearly along the beam in this particular example and it can change sign uh, and become positive uh, that means you're rotating in the counterclockwise direction so remember this is very interesting now because uh, uh, what this is telling you is that at different points along the beam uh, the external forces are tending to uh, bend the beam in different ways it's not a uniform bending upwards or bending downwards but it can actually change as you go along the beam because of the nature of the loading and the support system okay and so, uh, so this is something that uh, is extremely important for you to now uh, start uh, to be able to do comfortably. So while today's lecture was, uh, you know, really focusing on the fundamentals of how to get to it, in the next lecture we're going to work on more practice problems so that you get comfortable being able to do this for a variety of complex loading situations. Okay. So, so now make sure that you go ahead and complete all the intermediate steps that I mentioned that is calculating all the V's and M's as you transfer as you travel along this beam from position one um, by putting these different cuts and uh, make sure that you're able to draw the final uh, bending moment and the shear diagram as you go along the length of the beam. So to wrap up uh, today we have discussed uh, the uh, initial uh, conditions or initial point for how you begin to design a beam for a given application that begins by knowing exactly what the internal state of a beam is going to be along its length under the uh, conditions that you want to apply it for right and that means we need to find the shear and bending moment uh, at each point um, you start out by doing this by making a cut and assigning the shear and bending moment based on the sign convention that is shown here and then once you do the calculation uh, it may turn out to be uh, consistent with the sign or it might have an opposite sign and what that means is that if it is consistent with the signs, then what's happening in the inside is that your beam tends to uh, is going to be sheared in this way due to the external forces or bent upwards due to the external moments. And, and finally, uh, the diagrams uh, also help in designing the right beam for the desired application. So it's important for us to be able to calculate not the force, just the force in the moment, but also how it varies along the length, which is uh, shown in terms of a diagram. Okay. So, so make sure that you do the practice uh, exercise to complete uh, that, that particular uh, shear and bending moment calculations along the beam and, and lead to uh, finding the, the shear and bending moment diagram as well. Thank you.